How's recruiting been? Do you have any tips? Oh, it's been dog shit. But I definitely feel confident with what I've done. Honestly, I'm more in need of tips, bro. Hardest interview I done was that I just got screwed. <laughs> like you're like scratching in the dirt, kind of. I don't like it. Good to get an internship early on because then you can leverage that to get- Hey, what's up? Today we're at Princeton University asking students what it's like to study computer science at an Ivy. You're in luck, today's the career fair, so we're going around asking how's recruiting been, hardest classes on campus, and even what some of them are making at trading companies. Thanks to OnePlus for sponsoring this video. They recently came out with a brand new foldable phone called the OnePlus Open, and it's the lightest in its category. I'll talk about them more later. But first, I need to tell you how we got here. Hey, what's up, Norman? You see, this is Tejas, a senior at Princeton University who randomly bumped into me in New York City. He invited me to campus, so we're going to head over. Now, I live in Manhattan, as you probably already know, and that's over here. And today we're going to Princeton, which is in New Jersey, about two hours away. So we're gonna head to Penn Station, grab a train, and journey across state lines. And believe it or not, it's actually my first time doing any of this. So I'm taking my trusted roommate Shashank and my brother Vivek along with me. It should be a blast. To Princeton? Thank you. Okay, so we're here, but I have no idea where that is. But my friend Tejas actually goes here, so I'm gonna call him and he'll tell us where to meet him. Hey, what's up, Norman? Hey, we just got to Princeton. Where's a good place to meet you? Meet me at Blair Arch. Blair Arch. Okay, one sec. What I can do is I can swipe up from the top, I can go to Google Maps, and it'll actually be right next to each other, so I can talk to him, and then I can also look up here, Blair Arch. Oh, it seems like we're actually pretty close, and then that's it. And now I can make the maps full screen and get to Blair Arch. All right, let's walk. What's up, man? How are you? Good. How are Thanks you for uh, inviting me to campus. Yeah, welcome to Princeton. Thank you, thank you. All right, where's the career fair? Yeah, let's head it. What's your name, what year are you, and what do you study? My name is Jasper. I'm a senior and I'm studying computer science. I'm Thajus. I'm a senior here at Princeton and I study computer science. My name is Zane. I'm a junior studying computer science. Yeah, so my name is Arjun. I'm currently in the class of 2024 and I study operations features, which is similar to like applied math and statistics. And then you got in, but why'd you decide to come? Parents wanted me to. It was cheap. Like, campus is pretty. Wait, it was cheap? Yeah, financial aid is great. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so. okay. oh yeah, the Ivies have really good financial yeah. aid. So it was like a no-brainer for me. It's a very international campus and I've met a lot of people from all over the world. Mm. So it's been a very cool experience just to meet people from a lot of different backgrounds. Yeah. I mean, it really is the best school in America. You know, Princeton is known for like having a lot of opportunities available to students. I mean, in the time that I've been here, I mean, I've tried everything from like theater, which I never thought I'd do to, you know, being the president of like a major business club. And, you know, with those opportunities, it's sort of like you launch yourself right in and it's truly incredible. And now that you're here, was it the right decision? Yeah, definitely. I love it. Cool. It's great. People here are great. And even though classes are hard, it's like, it's pretty fulfilling. I really enjoy it here. I mean, the people I've met here, the teachers, the professors, the opportunities, they're like unparalleled, especially when I talk to other people, they're like blown away by, you know, I can have classes with like Peter Singer and then actually have dinner with my professors. So it's a, it's a good time. Plus it's like, the most beautiful campus on earth. I mean, I don't necessarily know what other paths would have looked like, but I definitely feel confident with what I've done. And I think when I graduate, you know, I'll be able to look back on my experience and smile. Which awesome. I think is important. Yeah. And then we just came out of the career fair. Yeah. How's recruiting been? Do you have any tips? Oh, it's been dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? I've just been applying. Haven't heard anything back. So, um, you know, I come to these things, just send off my resume and then never hear back. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's tough for full time right now. But um, my only tip would be stay persistent. I mean, that's what I'm trying to tell myself. Recruiting is tough. It's just a slog while you're working on classes and PSETs, but also trying to find a job because I'm a senior. Good to get an internship early on because then you can leverage that to get job offers. So that's my tip. Try to start early and don't put it off until senior year. It's pretty similar. Honestly, I'm more in need of tips, bro. It's just hard right now. Yeah, recruiting this year. So for anybody who's, um, you know, looking at the market right now, given that we're sort of in a bit of a recession, it's a little bit tight. There's a lot of opportunities, but, you know, you have to hunt around for them a bit. Um, my personal piece of advice, you know, don't give up. You definitely have to, you know, talk to a lot of folks, you know, make sure that you, you know, get your networking game strong, you know, make sure your resume is polished. And, you know, most importantly, remember that there is a job there for you out there. What's the best programming language and what's the worst? Best is Java and hot take, but worst is Python. Why? I don't put Python. Why Java versus Python? The Python syntax is just so awful. Like, it's just, I don't know. It just feels so, like, rudimentary. You really? Know? It's like you're, like, scratching in the dirt, kind of. I don't like it. What's the best programming language and the worst? Best? Python, worst, Java, I guess. I think C++ for both. It is the best and worst. It's best because like you can really do a lot with it and it's super quick. It's the worst because it's just so hard to be debug. Uh, best Python, worst C. C is like so fun. Have yeah. you interned anywhere? 
I have interned um, somewhere in New York. It's a pretty small company. If but, you're comfortable yeah. sharing, how much did they pay you and what was the job? I think it was remote. Um, 27 an hour with a sign-on bonus okay. of like 7000 or something like that. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. And what, what did you have to do? Like, What was your responsibility? Literally nothing. Just sat around all day at home. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> was it like CS tech? It was, it was software engineering. Yeah. So I interned at a military contractor two summers ago. And then this past summer, I interned at a consulting firm in okay. Chicago. Um, just doing some tech stuff like... A lot of data analysis, web development, kind of like a mix of software engineering and like data science and data engineering stuff. Um, for me, the first one was 28 an hour, and then my most recent one was about 33 an hour. And that was tech and then consulting? Yeah. I worked as a research assistant for the University of Tel Aviv my freshman year, and then between my sophomore and junior summers, I worked at a trading company in New York called Tower Research, and then I worked at a hedge fund called Bridgewater Associates the summer after that. So that was my past summer. Each of those companies, I was working on pretty much creating financial models. And also that involved like coding and math and some bit of finance. And it was pretty nice in terms of what they gave me. So they paid me around $45,000 for the summer plus housing and benefits. I think it was like 31 an hour. What has been the hardest interview you've ever done? Hardest interview? Um, there was this one for a quant company and they had me do some like ML stuff on their like hacker rank and it was just awful because first of all I never used hacker rank before yeah and I never taken an ML class so I just closed it and then went back to bed <laughs> okay so, yeah. do you remember what firm it was um I think it was Belvedere four lead code hards in a row and I just got screwed I can't remember the specific problem but okay. I just remember they were very difficult um, and I, I knew just by reading the prompt, it was going to be a difficult problem. So. The hardest interview I done was my last round for my sophomore year internship. It was pretty much four hours of finance, probability, computer science, and brain teasers. Mm. So it was just like back to back to back questions for four hours. Something to do with like matrices. I really don't remember. Why did you end up studying Orphe? My mom really didn't want me to study COS. She didn't want me to study computer science because she works in software engineering. Okay. And she hates her job. So she said, just study whatever you want, just not computer science. And so Orphe was the closest one and I just chose Orphe. <laughs> Wait, that's crazy because most parents right. these days are like, oh, study CS, study right, CS. Right, exactly. But your mom was like, no. No, she told me no. Why did you end up studying computer science? I think for the optionality, with computer science, you can really do anything. It also helps that I was like had prior experience coming into Princeton with computer science, so I knew I was good at it. Mm. And then I just kept going with it. Thankfully, computer science engineers specifically at Princeton are the only major that doesn't have a thesis. And I didn't really want to go into academia, so not having a thesis is gonna keep my senior year pretty light. I want to take a minute to tell you about this video sponsor, OnePlus, who've recently released their first foldable phone, the Open. At 239 grams, it's lighter than the iPhone 14 Pro Max and has an industry-leading slim, durable body. The phone also offers an almost non-existent patented crease. Like most people, I have an iPhone, but sometimes I just want something bigger. When I'm commuting, I like to watch videos and read books, and a bigger screen makes all the difference. But hardware isn't the only selling point. OnePlus excels in the software side too. The OnePlus Open's Open Canvas is powered by Google's Android software for foldable smartphones. With this technology, you can view three applications simultaneously when the device is unfolded, an experience that even Apple's iOS doesn't offer. You can also be rest assured that you'll be able to use the OnePlus Open for years to come, since OnePlus commits to providing four years of Android software updates and five years of security updates. Now, let's get back to some more interviews. What has been the hardest CS class you've been in? Why? Was it like the PSET, the exam? Mm. Like, talk to me about that experience. I think Post 324, which is Introduction to Machine Learning, that one's pretty rough. Um, first of all, the content is hard because it's just all math, but yeah. then the grading is also super hard. Um, on my last PSET, they took off 10 points just because I didn't write, like, oh, I didn't collaborate with anyone. I would say, for me, Coast 445, um, it was pretty challenging, but I like the challenge. I think I learned a lot in that class. Mm. Um, and I think in other classes, I kind of know the material pretty well beforehand, so it's easier. Um, but I think I learned a lot and the challenge really helped me. I think one of the hardest classes that I've taken personally is a machine learning class in the electrical engineering department. And what makes it difficult is just like very rigorous proof-based math instead of actually any coding. Mm. And the more math it is, the more difficult it is. I took uh, this class called Coast 217. It's like the intro to yeah. systems course. It was like hard, but it's mostly like really time consuming. Mm. And I had to like switch my semesters around. So I wasn't able to take it with like most of my friends. So I was yeah. like, oh, it was just kind of harder to navigate. Me. I knew some basic computer science from taking one of the AP courses in high school. And I jumped into what they call Coast 226, algorithms and data structures. I think probably within like the first two days, I started to realize that I was grossly out of my element. And I did not do that good on that 
that first assignment. But I think what was really helpful is that, you know, I was able to talk to my professor and he gave me a lot of advice and support on sort of how to try to push through that class. So with a lot of grit and determination, I didn't get the best grade, but I felt like, you know, I'd given it my all and it didn't turn out as bad as I thought it would be. What do you most look forward to after graduating? I really want to travel a lot. I think that like, you know, we only get 80 years on this earth. Yeah. Like, you might as well go see some new places, so that's something I'm really looking forward to. A lot of my friends are already in New York, so I look forward to joining them in the city and not having to do problem sets on weekends and mm. actually, like, hang out and explore the city and become not a student and experience all that life has to offer beyond the Princeton bubble. I guess it's just learning how to, you know, learning how to deal with life out of, out of college. I mean, in the time that I've been here, you know, we've gone through COVID, we've seen, you know, a market recession, the emergence of, gen you know, generative AI, like... It's been a crazy time to be a college student and out there is where you get to sort of face all of that and mm -hmm. sort of take everything you've learned and apply it. So it'd be really cool to see, you know, what that looks like. Okay. And then last, I don't know if you know about the foldable phones that have just come out. This is the OnePlus Open. Okay. I'm just going to hand it to you. Do whatever you want. Tell me what you think. I like the feel with it, like the two-hander. Wow, this is crazy. You can definitely do a lot with this. I used to only use OnePlus phones back in high school. This is very different than those though. It's very symmetric. You don't really see foldable phones that often. So this is kind of cool. Holy cow, that is actually... Wow, they really upgraded the design. So it actually has a front interface. This is really neat. Honestly, like as somebody who has like not the best eyesight, this would, uh, this would help me out so much. I asked everyone for their opinions. It's time I give you my closing remarks about the OnePlus Open. First of all, I'm a camera video guy and the quality is truly insane. The crease, not noticeable, and the sounds, so satisfying. Listen to that. I could do this all day. Hey, what's up? Today we're... They recently came out with a new brand... New, brand new... Thanks to OnePlus. Thanks to OnePlus.